Today I'm in Torino to catch up with Mucho Mas, an artist at Spacer in the city that focuses on exhibiting photography in the widest possible sense. I caught up with his founders Luca and Silvia to find out some more. I just wanted to start by if you could give a brief background of your kind of practices, like did you both study photography? Yeah, we both studied photography, like actually in the same place but in different years, so we didn't met at the photography mm. school. And then we met later because we were the uh, assistant at the photography studio. We decided to have our own place. We were thinking like just to have a studio, but then very quickly we had the feeling that there wasn't a place to exhibit contemporary photography. So when we opened the studio, we did this huge opening with the artworks of this photographer, Luke Bayoni. Like not just the opening of the studio, but the opening of this uh, solo exhibition. The idea was like, yeah, to have a studio and then maybe sometimes make exhibition. some exhibition. As soon as we took the place, we already knew that it would be like a gallery and then yeah. also a studio, but uh, yeah. Could you maybe just describe your practices? Like what, what are they in terms of photography? My practice is it's more connected to the limit of photography. Typically I work with digital photography and find a way to reconnect the sensibility of this kind of media to find a way to represent how the photography of today is recognized. At the same time I have more sentimental work about my life and I try to connect this kind of representation to the personal aspect. I have a more, I don't know, intimate uh, kind of photographic research and I also do like kind of sculpture and maybe I use photography to document this sculpture. I really go back and forth to photography. Like there are a long period of time in which I'm like very bored <laughs> of photography. I, I don't want to see photography for a while and then now it's a period that I, I went back to photography very strongly and I really like, <laughs> I enjoy taking photos. Now we are working with the photography but with other artists. Maybe you could just talk about the current exhibition with Alex. We find the works of Alex, for example, some many years ago when we saw a publication of him. It's kind of exploration about nature yeah. with a very sensitive meaning inside. He thinks a lot about this installation because he used some biological material. Because he lives in the Black Forest, so he has this connection with these rural areas. A lot of the materials that he uses also to display the photograph are just the stuff we found like at his grandmother's home uh, and uh, he really want to put this kind of connection and there is also this connection between like natural and artificial yeah. stuff. It's like a balance. He creates some contrast. For example, the, the photos are printed on Maybe the like glasses. Yeah. Also in the sequence you see very natural images but at the same time you find some like a microscopic images, blood or... Yeah, like also dream, like the, the images are really like fairy-like and yeah. dreamy-like. Uh, it's really plastic <laughs> uh, yeah. in a way. This banner that are made on this kind of reflective material, yeah. which is like the one from the street signs. There is this contrast between dreamy and natural way of his approach to nature and to photography. And then this different way to like show it and display it. to me, it really reminds me like the way you live in the rural area with like, you know, the plastic sign at the beginning of the village. You know, it's really like rough and cheap and brutal way of living. Like at the same time, this is also like dreamy and beautiful. So I love this contrast. Can we talk about the programme and how you work with artists? I noticed that generally you're sort of doing solo shows. A, how are you choosing those artists? And then B, what is the premise of when they make the exhibition? At the beginning I was uh, like going around festivals uh, around Europe, like Unseen in Amsterdam and Arles, and I was like looking for interesting projects and we just contact these Very artists cool. from Instagram. Things a little bit change in the years because at the beginning we talked with the artists a lot before but we just decided how to install it in the gallery but the project was already made. We gained a little bit of visibility and so there were more people contacting us. People see you and then they see yeah. the kind of interesting things you're yeah. making. And so the process became a little more complex. So yeah, we really work with the artists at the project and then at the installation so maybe not really site specific but they are kind of site specific in the way that this is the space and they, some of the artworks are built for the space. Yes. So. When we recite a project, we decide with the artist how to change it in a different way, this kind of project, and create some, something new about it. Some way about installation, or in another case, 
uh, to create new images about this project. It's a kind of uh, exchange directly with, with us and the artists. When I would build projects with artists, and that would influence the next project, and then that would influence yeah. the next project. Is there any projects in particular that you found influenced a change of direction in Mucho Mas or any kind of artist that you work with that developed your ideas about exhibition making? I think about the one of Caterina Morigi mm. because she had funding but she needed an association to help her. We opened this association like now legally Mucho Mas is an association and we had to like follow her because we were in this funding application Ward <laughs> with her. At the end, to have her exhibition, which was the first exhibition which was not uh, photographic at all, because she used photographic medium in their process but not in their output. And so I think th this was the first time we did this kind of way of working with artists. It's funny how like one project can just change all the other projects in the future. Yeah. I feel like it kind of happened again recently. We wanted to have this exhibition with Eva Kruger, an uh, artist from the Netherlands. We were planning this for a really long time and she has a very strong practice where she really need to be in the studio when she build uh, the exhibition because she works with photography but the photographies are uh, printed on the construction materials and they became a really sculptural elements. When we were planning this exhibition we were talking to a big photographic institution here in Torino to add some funding to get Eva here. We didn't get the funding so we decided to like do it anyway and we had this one month long uh, online residency which we had a meeting uh, on the computer going all day and she was in her studio in the Netherlands and we were doing like her hand, okay move it here, okay fine. We had these big prints and she was guiding us, uh, robotic stuff, we yeah. were the robotic hands. So it kind of opened some possibilities, like, okay it was like just because we didn't have money but at the same time we can do it in the future again, <laughs> it was kind of nice. It's a good way around of like yeah. a problem and then it's like yeah. sometimes people think the only way to do a project is have the money and then we can do the project but it's like well, what other ways are like possible? You can find a way to do yeah. it. Could we just talk about if there's any spaces or kind of projects that you look to for sort of inspiration? Could be kind of projects that have stuck in your mind over the years. When we went to Marseille to do a, an exchange of exhibitions, there was this super nice space that at our output, like artist run space with an exhibition space, but with also maybe a small bar or cafe or gathering where you can just yeah. really like Gather with hang people. out, yeah, hang out with people, and also to have the space to do residencies. So maybe small apartments or rooms or whatever. Like for sure, it's an idea to it's, have the residency it's space. A, a cultural center yeah. Yeah. for the contemporary photographer, where you can go there and find a bookshop, for example, have a time to see the book or analyze, or make a research, or make a residency and then I have an exhibition uh, at the end of the uh, residency. That like would solve the problem of what we just talked about as well though in terms of you know how to find artists is like if you have those communal yeah, spaces yeah, yeah. they come whereas sometimes through just a gallery with nothing else around it's like they don't want to hang out for long enough. It allows people to yeah. congregate for a bit longer. So this residency project is really something mm -hmm. that we would like to do. We do research so when you do research, you need a real connection with the artist to create something new, something of very different about the photography. And uh, the artist needed to be in the space to create. Do you have advice for younger artists? Or if you had advice for yourself as a younger artist? I feel like I don't have practical advice. I just have interior advice, like <laughs> counseling advice, like just do it. <laughs> don't think to the output a lot, like don't think to sell, uh, don't think about those stuff. It just put a lot of pressure. For sure, something that we should do, I think, and we maybe should have done earlier, is to really connect more with people that can help us and be more, not be afraid to ask for help. Maybe we are uh, a little bit shy sometimes. It's hard when, you, when you're starting out as a project and you want to look like you know how to do everything. And especially if you're working with artists, you want to look confident so that they are confident in producing the work. You need to find mentors or people who can help you in the world who have gone through the experiences that you're experiencing and then just to ask people simple questions that are like how do we do this?